Hello, everyone. Welcome to Self Love You. My name is Jenna Ryan, your Self Love Life Coach. I am going to talk to you today. I get into stuff really quick, so here we go. 10 Ways Manipulators Trick You. Now, first of all, I will tell you, I'm Jenna Ryan. I've been through a lot of stuff, and I know how manipulators operate. And the reason I know is because I have been someone who has been duped by manipulators, and I'm fascinated by the process of what caused me to fall for that or how to stay out of that situation in the future. I can firmly say that today I am so much better at dealing with manipulative people or manipulators. I'm so much better. I mean, I can catch them before it starts many times, or I can prevent the manipulator from getting everything that they need from me. And it's very interesting to conceptualize. So I'm just going to talk to you really quick about the 10 ways that manipulators trick you. First, I want to say that what you have to offer for a manipulator, I want you to understand the mindset of a manipulator. Generally speaking, if you're listening to my, listening to my channel, you're more of a people pleaser type, you're coming out of that, or you need to come out of that, you know, maybe more of a doormat type, more of the type that didn't have boundaries, that you weren't taught to stand up for yourself, you weren't taught your value, and you were taught to get external validation by pleasing people who were manipulative. So if that was you, then you might, in your adult life, become more prone to the tricks of the manipulated person, manipulators. So manipulators are people that are out to get. They're out to take. They're out to con. They're out to scam. They're out to get what they want from you using tactics that you do not know about until you watch my channel or watch all these other videos on YouTube or start researching or start growing as a person, going to therapy, really taking apart the dynamics of your communications, of your relationships. So they are they want to get something from you. And different manipulators want different things. A love manipulator may want you to fall in love with them so they can leave you high and dry, so that they can pull the rug, so that they can do the bait and switch. The a, a friendly manipulator, a friend may just want, you know, you to buy something or they may want, you may have someone that is in a multi-level marketing. They want you to, to buy into their product or service. They want you to be a part of their team. They want something from you. They want your energy. They want your adoration. The manipulator needs what you have to offer in terms of any kind of resources. It could be your attention that they need, that, that fills them up, that validates them. It can be your complete, um, the fact that you're able to be controlled without your knowledge or the fact that they can control you. That really gives people some a dopamine hit if they're a manipulator. Some people may want money. Some people may want your social circle, some people just see something in you that you have that they want to extract from you. It's very uh, close to narcissistic supply. It could be narcissistic supply. All of these things are intangible. They're not, they're concepts. So they are pretty much interchangeable. So we're just talking about it to really help soothe you. You may be in a process of being manipulated. You may have been looking up this topic on Google. You met the AI, may have found out that this is what you're looking for. So here you are today, and I'm here to tell you 10 ways that these manipulators manipulate. You have something they want. I kind of think of it like, okay, let's say, let's say that you're in the dating pool, and let's say you have, you know, five choices among five men. And each of these five men are attractive and good looking. But you find out one of these five men's men is a billionaire. Okay. He is a billionaire. <laughs> and then you're like, okay, I, I like the billionaire. The billionaire has what? Resources 
oh, I, that would be great to be with a billionaire. Everybody would love me and I would be able to buy a new house. Okay. So think of it that way. That's how a manipulator sees you. To, to them, you are like a billionaire. You have everything they don't think they have. You have what they need to feel whole. You have what they need to feel good. You have that empathy, that humanity, that gullibleness, that naivete, that, that uh, willingness to be controlled. You may be masochistic. They may be sadistic. They love to con, and you love to be con, because this is a dance. This is not something that a manipulator can do alone. A manipulator can only manipulate with a willing participant. And if you are a willing participant, you are able to be tricked. You want to be tricked. You don't know you want to be tricked. It could be subconscious, but because you're not situated to protect yourself against this, these behaviors and set boundaries, that means that you are easily manipulated and you are out there seeking for someone else to control you, to take over your I am. There was a book when I was little, or my, my little brother was little. It was called, Are You My Mommy? Are You My Mommy? And this little boy went around to all the animals, you know, a giraffe, Are You My Mommy? And no, that giraffe wasn't the mommy. And this little boy was looking for his mommy and was looking for his mommy in, in everything he saw. And that's kind of like, if you're allowing a manipulator to manipulate you, you are looking for your mommy. You are looking for someone to dominate, control, and to take over you because you don't know who you are. You don't know where you start and they they begin and other people end. You don't really have a full, fully developed sense of self. So manipulators can manipulate you. To those of you who are here for the 10 ways to manipulate, I promise I will get to those right now. I'm going to do it just for you. I'm going to get into it. Okay, here we go. Okay, number one, a manipulator. Number one, they give you what you need. Remember that a manipulator is smooth, smooth as silk. A devil doesn't come up to you with two horns and, you know, <laughs> looking scary. A devil comes up to you, sly. You know, just think of Little Red Riding Hood and the wolf, Big Bad Wolf comes up like a grandma. The, the, a manipulator is going to come to you kind, nice, giving you what you need. And this really gets into the dance of the manipulator and the manipulatee. You have to need something that the manipulator can sense and knows that they need to give to you. Whatever it is that you need, you can find a manipulator who will manipulate you, take you over by giving you that which you need. So what do I mean by this? Let's say you need time, attention, and affection and direction. Let's say you didn't get the parenting you needed. Let's say you're missing chunks of yourself. Let's say you have a void. Let's say you're lonely. This person will give you whatever it is you need. They're shapeshifters. They can give one person what they need, another person what they need, another person what they need. They are incredible at meeting your needs, okay? Overly so, like way overboard. So that's kind of how you know. Like if somebody is coming, you have to stop and take a step back. If someone is coming and available to meet your needs, and you're like, wow, this feels really great. This person is, you know, doing this, that, and the other. And a third, this feels amazing. You really need to take a step back and make sure, unfortunately, you have to be a little skeptical and make sure that they're not doing this for another purpose. When you're in the middle, when you're in the mix with a manipulator, it is very difficult to know that you're with a manipulator because as you grow and develop, you get higher and more sophisticated manipulators. Your needs, um, you may have needs that, only a manipulator can meet. You know, you may there may be a purpose for whatever it is you're doing. So it's really hard during the process of being manipulated and being having your energy an energy vampire in your life. It can be difficult to realize 
that the, the needs that they are meeting comes at a cost. It comes at a cost of your truth, your life force, your happiness, your peace, your joy. Because this energy vampire, this manipulator does not have anything to give back to you. But they are tricking you into thinking that they are giving you what you need. You think you need all these things from an external source, but truth be told, none of these things can come from an external source and someone who's really able to provide these things is not going to be that gung-ho about coming and meeting all of your needs. That's not normal. That's not balanced. That's overdone. You know, it's like if somebody just comes in and just sweeps you off your feet and and wants to do, 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 do for you, there is an agenda, I promise you. Somewhere, somehow, there's an agenda. A relationship is equal. It's where the person can, you know, basically, you can both be okay with or without each other. You're not, you're not, the person's not bending over backwards and jumping through hoops of fire to get your billion dollars. It's more natural it's more relaxed. It's more of a give and take. If you have someone that is just giving you what you need, you have to, to watch out and ask questions and set boundaries. Okay. This is going to make more sense as I go. Number two, manipulators play psychological games. These games include gaslighting, triangulating, love bombing, and the silent treatment. Every manipulator I have ever encountered due to my susceptibility to being manipulated because of my upbringing and my lack of knowledge of these types of people. Every manipulator I have ever encountered gaslights, they triangulate, they love bomb, and they use the silent treatment. Without fail, this is what they do. It's just their game. A manipulator will play psychological games. They are always gaming. They're never not gaming. Everything they do is a game. In the time when they are using the love bombing, in the time that they are giving you what you need, in the time that they are inundating you with attention, affection, all of those things, in the times that they are building you up, in the times that they are giving you words of affirmation, in the times that they are making you feel like you can conquer anything, in the times that they are there for you when no one else is, they're gaming it. It's a game. It's a re- they have a reason. They have a purpose. A normal, healthy person does things for others out of the kindness of their heart when they are ready, not because they are trying to game that person, not because they're trying to get supply, not because they're trying to get resources, okay? They're always in game mode. They're always playing a game. Which mode you're in depends upon how much of what they need they've gotten or what else they have around, okay? So that is number two. They play psychological games. Number three. The third way that manipulators trick you is they lie. Manipulators will not hesitate to lie as often as necessary in order to build a fantasy narrative, a fantasy illusion of whatever it is that they need to be in your life for you to fall for their schemes. So they build a fantasy illusion. They lie. In fact, depending upon the manipulator, they act, well, every manipulator They actually become that part in the fantasy narrative that meets your needs, that, you know, your hero, they become that. They they know how to shape shift into whatever it is that you need, and they, they lie to build this fantasy. They lie to themselves. They lie to you. They lie by omission. They lie by commission. They make up all sorts of lies. They create all sorts of of fantasy scaffolding that in the end is not even real. It's not even true. It's fake. It's not real. So all manipulators lie. They're lying to build a fine, a fantasy narrative of whatever it is they, you need them to be 
in order to stay locked in the position to allow them to extract narcissistic supply and resources. They lie. Lie like a rug. They have no no concept of truth. They have no boundaries when it comes to truth. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go down to five. And then after five, I'm going to tell you what you must do in all of these different levels of manipulation, okay, in order to get out of it, unhook from it. Number four, they one up you. They one up you. The whole time you are with a manipulator, they must be ahead of you. They must, okay, when I'm looking back at this, not always, but almost every time, they have to be one up. They have to neg you, which if you look at the, you know, the player handbook of players, which I was fascinated by, they have to neg you. They have to bring you down a notch. They have to trick you into believing that you are less than you are. They have to trick you into believing that they are more than they are. And that's the way they're able to gain your trust and to manipulate you, to manipulate you into position to put you into the role that they need you to be in to extract whatever it is that they need from you. They one up you. They one up you subtly. If you're good and you can and you and you're offended and you're sensitive to people one upping you and you're real good at that and you have so much empathy and you can feel it, then they will one up you in a covert fashion in a way that you don't even realize you were just one upped. They will, you know, use examples of a movie star and and weave it into the into the conversation and they are good they are very good at what they do they are always gaming they're always tricking they're always conning and they are never true they don't know what truth is they don't know how to survive without being a parasite they are leeches they are only able to gain a sense of self, a sense of feeling good if they are able to extract your valuable resources, energy, whatever it is that they want. And to them, you are like a billion dollars. You have so much value. But they play it cool. They play it like they're the ones who have all the value and you are the little peon who needs them to tell you how to conduct your life and what to do. So they one up you, and we could do a whole video on that. I'm sure I already have in, in my 200 videos that I've done, audios. Number five, they put you into a state of fear, obligation, and guilt. They can use any piece of these. They can use these subconsciously. They can use these consciously. They can shapeshift. If you catch on to what they're doing, then they can change how they're doing it. They're very malleable. They're very pliable. They change. So a manipulator, when you catch them manipulating, you can call them out and they can change and they can stop doing it that way. There's multiple ways that they can manipulate you. They, they are not, they're not limited in their ways that they can manipulate a gullible, naive person who doesn't set boundaries. They can manipulate you every which way but loose, Okay. And the whole time that they're doing this, they're watching you. They're listening to you. They're changing according to whatever it is you're, you're saying. You may be growing as a person. They're growing as a manipulator. Every time you grow, they want to know because they can grow in a way that helps them to mani manipulate you at your new stage of growth. It's very dynamic. When you're growing with a manipulator, you're helping them grow and manipulating you, and you're growing as, as you find out who's manipulating who, okay? They use fear, obligation, and guilt. So as you grow, as you come out of the fog, as you start to discover what's going on, who's pulling the strings, who's the master of puppets, you might begin to get good at sussing out the fear, obligation, and guilt in your life. And you may get good at setting boundaries with certain family members. You may get good at, at doing this, but ultimately, deep down inside, you may have a nugget of obligation, people-pleasing, fear, fear to stand up for yourself, fear to say no, 
okay? But you don't even know you have it. You may think you've got this down, but ultimately you may be missing a few pieces. And so a manipulator will figure out what pieces you're missing and they will push the buttons. They scheme, they scheme, they treat you like a project, they they categorize your needs, they categorize your weaknesses, they are constantly gauging where you are in the process so that they can get what they want. And there are certain points that they, they, they're done with you and they don't want anything to do with you because they're not getting anything from you. You're too easy. You're, you're not giving them what they want or you're too easy or they find something else or you're just boring to them. Manipulators like to stay very um, engaged in manipulating They don't like somebody they can't manipulate. They get frustrated if they can't manipulate you. And they also don't like um, after they have manipulated you and you're just too easy. They'll come back to you, but they get bored. They want anybody, they need fresh manipulating meat. They need fresh naive meat, okay? So they will use fear, obligation, and guilt. So I said I was going to tell you at number five. What what can you do to stop this process? At any time during the manipulation process, you are free to untangle from the manipulation. And this is done in a variety of ways, but mainly just by knowing who you are, A, and setting boundaries. Because a manipulator cannot manipulate you if they are not really taking your time and really overwhelming you with meeting your needs, gaslighting, triangulating, love bombing. Up. If, they don't, if they don't have your attention, if you are not isolated, if, if you are setting boundaries, if you are meeting your own needs internally, if you have another source besides them, if you take away your I am at any time, you're free to do this. It could be painful. It could be difficult. It may be hard if someone who is hell-bent on meeting all your needs, it may be hard to take a step back and have a more balanced approach. This may feel so good because these needs are needs that you have, that unmet needs, those unmet needs that you're hooked with. This may be, you know, very difficult. It may be painful to walk away from someone who's just totally meeting every single one of your needs and da-da-da-da-da. It may be difficult, but it is healthy to do so because what you end up doing is you end up separating the men from the little boys. You end up separating somebody who's true from somebody who is just trying to get something from you. You you end up separating someone who's uh, actually giving out of the kindness of their heart and someone who is actually giving to take, who wants to take you down eventually, who has no empathy, doesn't care, and is lying and being fake with you. Okay, because that's what, when a manipulator is manipulating you, when a manipulator is meeting your needs, they are lying in order to do so. So if someone is telling you what you need to hear, if someone is telling you that you are the greatest, a manipulator has no, they don't care. They will lie to you and tell you you're the greatest, even when that's not what they think. Okay, they will tell you that in order to get you where they want you. So basically, what is it? If, if it's a lie, it's not true, it's not real. So if your needs are being met with lies, what good is that? That is going to take you off your true path. It's better to go without the need being met than to be have the need be met with lies, with fake games. So setting boundaries is the answer. Saying no is the answer. A manipulator does not want to tango with a person who says no. A manipulator does not want to tango with a person who calls them out. Oh my gosh, no. A person does not want to tango. A manipulated person will not want to engage with you if you call them out. If you call them out on a lie, if you question what they're saying, if you tear down their matrix, if you tear down their false illusions in any way, shape, or form, they will bolt. They will be out of there. They can't look at themselves. They, don't, they want to be in their fantasy. 
They're going to leave. They're not going to mess with you. You're going to be too difficult. You're going to make it too difficult on them. If you are being manipulated, you are part of the problem. You are allowing the manipulation and you are playing into the manipulation by not speaking out against the fake news, okay? By not questioning, by not saying things like, oh, is that true? Are you? Um, show me the proof of that. I want to see receipts. This may sound crazy, but I need receipts for that. You can't. You can't just tell me something like that without a picture. Does that make sense? Okay, so number five, number six, this is a good one. The rest of these are really good. Y'all stick around. Number six, a manipulative person will give commands. They will give commands. They know how the brain works. They study how the brain works. They know how the brain of a person without boundaries operates. They know how to give commands. They know that you're crying, that you're hungry to be told what to do. You're hungry for commands because you don't realize your power. You're not tapped into your truth, your higher self, your power, your God. You're not tapped into God's word, God's will. You're tapped into letting everybody else run your life. So they are going to be there to give commands. They may give commands directly, like you need to do this. You need to do that. They may give unsolicited advice. They may, which is also a sense of, that's also a type of one up. Because who gives advice unless they think they know better? And who knows better about your life than you? Nobody lives your life and knows everything about you. They may know what you share, but they don't know everything. They don't know your path. They don't know your what God put you on the earth to do, but they can sure take you over and, and thwart you like the enemy that is trying to thwart you from your path. So they give commands. Be careful when people give commands and be um, aware that there are ways to give commands that are not direct. So always be, you know, your, your gut will tell you, your intuition will tell you that this is happening all I'm doing is giving words to what the intuition inside of you may already be saying. Okay, so number seven, they act as do-gooders. This is a very clever trick of the manipulator. A manipulator will act like a do-gooder, and this gives a subconscious sense that this person is a good person, that this person is doing this, that, and the other and they must be a good person. Anybody that would do these things, those are traits of a good person. So I can overlook, you know, my my hunch that that was a lie they told earlier because they're giving to the Salvation Army. Okay, not every person who does good works, not every good Samaritan, not every person who's a philanthropist is a manipulator. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that a manipulator will always be involved in helping. They'll always have like a helper mentality. They're trying to help others, help you, help the world. They do that because it really set, puts you off guard. There's a cognitive dissonance that you have when a do-gooder is actually not a do-gooder at all. They use it as a front. So... Number eight is they flatter you. Ooh, they are full of flattery. They have a flattering tongue. Proverbs 29, five through six in the Bible, it says a person who flatters his neighbor is spreading a net for him to step into. To an evil person, sin is bait in a trap, but a righteous person runs away from it and is glad. Flattery is a dead giveaway. Flattery is a giveaway that someone is up to no good, okay? Who are you going to walk up? Don't. Flattery is just bad, okay? I'm not saying that giving a compliment to someone is bad, but an overabundance of flattery shows that someone is trying to meet your need to feel better or to raise your self-esteem or someone 
is trying to trick you into believing that they think highly of you. So it's, it's, it's them. It's, you have a need. If you're going to sit there and listen to flattery over and over, you have a need for words of affirmation, someone to say words to you that you never heard. This person comes to you with flattery. They, the flattery that they speak to you also is a lie because it's tricking you into believing that that person actually thinks that about you. And while that person may actually think that about you, that person is fickle. That person has two sides. That person is not in, in tune with who they are. So they may think that today, but something else later. You don't know that person per se. I mean, it takes years to know someone. It takes years. Okay, let me go back to my list here. Okay, they flatter. Flattery, every manipulative person I have ever met in my life uses heaps upon heaps upon heaps upon heaps of flattery. Beware of flattery. Is that a scripture? I don't know, but Proverbs twenty six twenty eight says, A lying tongue hates its victims, and a flattering mouth works ruin. So, there's 22 Bible verses about flattery, if you are ever so inclined. I may do another audio about that podcast. Okay, number nine. A manipulated person will want constant, 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 constant attention. They want your attention. If you are a target of a manipulative person, they want your attention 100%. They don't want you thinking about anything but them. If they give you free time, it's not much. They want to talk to you on the phone for hours and hours. They want to go out. They show up at your front door. They are constantly in your face. You are always getting, you know, FaceTimes. Everywhere you turn, they are flattering you. They are wanting uh, with attention. They're, they're flooding you with attention. They are trying to coax you into a trance. They use lots of stories and words and twisted narratives. And they want to coax or however they want to manipulate. But they will coax you into a trance of feeling safe and secure in their constant attention, which is not feasible for them to keep up forever Um, It may feel good. It may feel like you are safe and you may be getting your needs met that, you know, you're not meeting on your own. You may feel very secure and safe, but constant attention is not healthy. It is unhealthy and it needs, you need to have boundaries against that kind of behavior and take a step back from anyone who is just flooding you with attention because it means you, it could mean that you are being coaxed into a trance, a trance of giving up yourself, a trance of handing over your I am, a trance of letting them control you and dip into your pockets, dip into your resources. You end up sharing things with them that you would share with a very close friend when in reality, this person is not a friend, but a wicked liar who's manipulating you. Okay, and number 10 10 of the 10 ways manipulators trick you is they isolate you. When they do all of these things, they're meeting your needs. They're playing psychological games, gaslighting, triangulating, love bombing, silent treatment. They're three, building false narratives with lies. They're one-upping you. They're, They're using fear, obligation, and guilt to keep you in position. They're giving you commands. They're acting as do-gooders, so they you, they you think they're so wonderful. They're flattering you, giving you constant attention, coaxing you into a trance. This will cause you to be isolated, and you will get tunnel vision. If you do not set boundaries against these behaviors, call out lies, and make sure that you dole out your attention, dole out your time and your energy to multiple places. One person, if one person is dominating your life, then you know that you really need to take a step back and begin to address the situation, make sure that you're involved with other people in other activities, in things that 
make you feel rejuvenated, that you have alone time, that you are more in control of the communication, not constantly being overruled, overrun, run over by another person's needs. Okay. Because the manipulator will manipulate you into thinking that they are meeting your needs when ultimately you're the one who's meeting their needs. And so here you will feel guilty because you're like, oh, they're so sweet. They're always, you know, making me feel better when I'm down and da, 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 da. When in reality, they're not so sweet and you're the one that's making them feel better because you're laying down like a carpet and allowing them to walk all over you and take over whatever it is they want. And just the experience for them of winning, of, of you not knowing, they just love that. They love pickpocketing. In term, emotional pickpocketing. That is their game. That's their modus operandi. There are prisons full of people who are, who are ripping people off, who rip people off. You know, I just got a call from one of the New York Post reporters, and she wanted to know about my time in prison when I went to prison for 60 days for protesting. And she would, they were asking me about what prison was like, and Elizabeth Holmes, and Um, Jen Shaw, S-H-A-H. Both of those ladies are in the prison where I was. So a lot of the reporters want to know what I think, thought about the prison. They're there for like eight years, 10 years. I was only there for like 60 days. But anyway, um, it's interesting because those people, they chose to manipulate people. They chose to trick, you know, elderly people. They chose to those were crimes that they chose. They were being manipulative. And those are the kind of people, prisons are full of those kinds of people who are manipulative. And so you really have to stop being a willing participant, stop writing checks to this manipulative person, stop giving them time. Because I think you'll be surprised once you are free from the manipulative person. Once you are free, once you step out of the dance, once you unhook, once you untangle, once you begin to meet your own needs, once you get, go through the tunnel of feeling like, oh my gosh, I feel so sad. This manipulator is not manipulating me anymore. And I'm feeling a little bit lonely because even though the manipulator was manipulating, at least I felt happy while they were doing it. <laughs> Usually it's not until the end that after they get what they want or they do whatever they do, their game is up, the gig is up, the that you go, oh, shoot. Well, it was fun while it lasted. And and so, but once you really brace yourself and go through the process of loss or grief from being manipulated and being in a manipulative relationship, then you find a beautiful place of fabulosity. You're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize how much energy, how much resources, how much I am so much happier without the manipulator around manipulating. Okay, a manipulator takes a lot of effort and energy. And while it may feel good to give, while you may be a giver, um, ultimately you will find that when you're away from that and you take a moment and you wake up and you fall on the ground and you wake up from the trance, you're like, oh my gosh, my life is beautiful. I have a beautiful life. And I have all these beautiful friends and I have all these beautiful resources and nobody's tricking me right now. And it feels so fantastic. And then you have someone else come around who, you know, tries to put on some game on you and you're like, um, you call them out immediately because you keep getting better and better and better. And so, you know, ultimately you'll never be manipulated again. And, and the goal is, is to be in a equal equal relationships all across the board with everyone in your life and you keep getting better. You didn't get here by in one day, so you won't heal in one day. It takes time to get savvy. It takes time to learn to build boundaries. It takes time to have the guts, to have the stamina, to have the assertion, to stand up and say no, to stand up and and call someone out on their bold-faced lies. It takes practice. It takes experience. So no one, Rome was not built in a day. It takes time. You're doing a great job. Thank y'all so much for listening to me today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and I will be back soon with another podcast with Self Love You. 
Until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Oh, everyone, please like, share, comment, leave me a message below and say hello and let me know about your manipulative experiences. Talk to you soon. Bye.